It's the future. Am I going to get replaced by AI? Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And if you're not familiar with what we do, we help people create amazing lighting. And, and one of those things is trying to always be on the forefront, be paying attention to what's going on in our world of lighting and how that affects us, whether we're a band, a church, a DJ that's working with lighting. And probably about a good year and a half ago, um, this little box here, it's plugged in, but I'm gonna grab it, called Maestro DMX, popped up on Kickstarter. I backed it on the first day um, because it sounded interesting. And what Maestro DMX promises is they promise basically an AI based platform, a software inside this box that connects, uh, it actually doesn't connect via USB, it connects via network, it's powered via USB, that <clears throat> allows you to create AI run lighting. And so what does that look like? Well, in the past few years, we've seen sound active modes in fixtures get better and better. And this, in my mind, is kind of an extension of that. Now, some people would probably argue and get mad at me for saying that and probably say something like, you know, hey, David, that's, you know, AI and the sound active mode are different. Well, you know, I'm looking at it from the results perspective, right? <clears throat> from what does this do? The other thing to remember, which I think is really important, is that essentially, this is something that's brand new. Like I received mine about a month ago, a little bit less, okay? Um, and I was one of the first Kickstarter backers, right? It's brand new. So while the hardware is great, the box works, it does the thing, what we'll see as improvement, as more users use it, more people get to play with it, is in the software. So it might not be perfect today, but it is kind of impressive, and I want to show you exactly that and how it works. So just to give you a quick idea here, we've got our stage up, we've got our 3D visualizer, and I did that so we had some fixtures that were in their fixture library, though in the spring they're adding in a, a kind of a purchased fixture library with a third-party provider that's big in the industry so that, that there will be not so few fixtures in it. And I've pulled up the YouTube Music Library, which allows us to use free tracks um, that artists let you use. And we're just gonna play something here and then I've got uh, set up, instead of the kind of laziest, easiest way for me to set this up was to actually use a measurement microphone that I have pointed at my computer speaker, um, just because that seemed easier than running a direct line out of my mixer to the Maestro DMX. Um, but like, for example, we recently talked to these guys at the LDI trade show, which is a big lighting trade show here in the US. And they were literally just out of a computer, 3.5 millimeter to RCA jacks right in, um, DJ turntables with RCA right in, you know, and off it was. So either way will work. But let's, let's just play some music and see what it does. My own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles Profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries And watched me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room my world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Okay, so that one was called Cradles by Suburban. I'm not sure if it's coming through correctly on my audio, so I'm gonna pause here and then grab a rock song out of the YouTube library, show you that, and then dive into kind of the setup, the limitations, things you need to know if you're interested in this.
Okay, so let's put some context to this real quick as we get started before we really walk through the setup. I think, I mean, the ideal audience for something like this out of the gate is going to be musicians, DJs, maybe worship bands who are running their own stuff live from stage and previously just had some lights sitting on sound active or had no lighting at all, okay? This technology doesn't, at least yet, come anywhere close to replacing a lighting designer, and that's not what it's designed to do, right? But you have to admit, if you watch this demo, you watched what I just did, even though it's not incredibly fast at reacting to changes, and it's not mind-blowing in the effects it chooses, it still does a way better job than a sound active mode or just having lights on, right? Or having somebody press some occasional buttons but being way off time, right? Like, it beats all of those options. So now I want to look a little bit at Maestro and kind of show you how it works. So... There's basically a couple different tabs. The first is the stage tab. So this is like, stage is like a show file, essentially. That's how I best understand it. Um, where you patch in fixtures there and you set them up, okay? So in this case, I've got Intimidator 360Xs from eight from Chave, sorry. Um, UB12Hs from ADJ and Slimpar H6s kind of as a front light. Um, and you can't really even see them because they're over there. Um, and the... Number one thing in the patching detail is the fixture group. So there's three groups, primary, secondary, and tertiary, and they're designed to be in that order. So primary is your stuff that's going to move the most, that's going to have the most action to it. Secondary is kind of a second version of that, slightly simplified. And then your tertiary stuff are lights that really don't change a lot. Um, they kind of just stay on. So I've parked my front lighting in there so that there is some consistent front lighting when Maestro runs. In here, you know, it'll show you all the channels. You can do things like um, adjusting the offset and width of those channels. That's actually in the uh, layout tab. And you're able to arrange these different fixtures around and, and see how they work, how many pixels they have, etc. You can turn them on and off. Lastly, the control tab, that's where you can set for things like pan and tilt. You can limit the width so it only points at the stage and works within those bounds um, and, and, and the output range as well. So by, by limiting those two basically per each fixture, I wish you could do it per group, but I'm sure they'll get there. You can limit these things individually per fixture. So once you do that, basically, then get your audio in. Make sure you've got good levels, right? Because um, that's really key is just making sure that the line input is getting a good level. For example, when you go silent, make sure there's no hums or buzzes that are coming through because that's going to mess with it, obviously. The activity gain is also interesting. I found that it's good to watch and basically use. It says here for produce music, you usually don't need to touch it, and I found that to be true. But if something has a little more dynamics, it can make sense to amp it up a little bit, um, and they give you that ability there. Now, let's talk about actually running a show, actually running a set via Maestro DMX, what it looks like and how it can help you. Maestro DMX essentially does movement, it does intensity chases, and it can change other parameters, but for the most part, that's what it sticks to. It does not analyze the music, at least at this point, and pick colors. That is the one thing it doesn't do. Now, it works off of the colors you choose and builds on it, builds effects that kind of go with it, but it doesn't actually choose colors. Um, and I think that's one thing that out of the gate, a lot of people are frustrated with. Maybe the software will get there in the future. I don't know. But again, it's way better than sound active mode for a band that has no time, just wants to set something up basic, doesn't have somebody to operate it. Like that is the target audience here. It's not the rest of the world, right? Give it a few years, you know, we'll be working at Starbucks. No, AI is going to take that over too. Gosh darn it. I'm kidding. Um, kind of, but, um, but basically what you do here is you have different pattern controls on the primary group, same with the secondary and the tertiary. And these are, uh, basically like kind of preset 
amounts of movement, okay? Um, so like, let's just switch this one now to energetic and run that music again. And so you can see when I did that real quick, you know, the movers that are in the primary group, they really got moving. The secondary got pumping. The tertiary changed colors but didn't turn off, which I really liked. So what you basically do is it's not 100% hands off, okay? You select patterns that they've got these predefined in here. And then you've got these color palettes um, that walk you through just tons of different color combinations that may fit with your particular song. Okay, then ideally you would probably switch color patterns with each song. How do you do that? Well, you go ahead and you adjust those and you adjust basically these pre-made patterns, basically adjust the bottom section here. Okay, so what that looks like is that, you know, you go ahead and adjust these, you know, different sliders if you want or just leave it as it is to make different feelings right to make things work so that it looks you know the way you want it to look right and then you save those here to cues so this is new cue and of course it's going off because it's using a microphone and then you would pick your your pattern and you pick your color palette and you could set a duration for it for how long it goes till it automatically moves forward. Th those are the basics when you save a cue. And then these are the basics when you're kind of building your building blocks for cues. And then, you know, like I said, there's kind of two ways you could run a show in Maestro. The first is just by playing these cues individually. The cool thing about this box is you can plug in a MIDI controller directly and actually assign these different buttons to MIDI right inside. Really cool. You can also assign the ability for a blinder, strobe, blackout, fog, and a custom effect all via MIDI. So you could put this on a foot switch, you could put this on a controller that maybe the sound guy hits occasionally, or somebody on stage. You've got options there. But kind of the point, I guess, as I wrap this up is that you know, technology like this is still in its infancy. What I really like about Maestro DMX is it's completely brand agnostic, fixture agnostic, right? It's gonna work with any fixture from any brand, doesn't matter. I also like that they give you some control over what it does. It's not just, you know, a sound active mode. With that though, comes the fact that you do have to have some setup and there is a learning curve to set it up. At this point in the game, it's not a plug and play, just go and make it work, right? But if you do wanna optimize it and have somebody press a button once a song or send over a MIDI signal from your DAW once a song to switch the preset, let it run in sound active mode, this is the kind of thing that a band or a DJ who's running their own stuff from stage could set up relatively quickly, change lighting rigs all the time, patch in venues lights, etc and just have it work and generally be a pretty decent show. So does it replace our jobs as, you know, queuing out complex lighting to intricate music? No. Does it replace a lighting person and the decisions they make and the show they can make on a gig? No. But what it does is it puts the tools of lighting and being able to make some pretty good lighting for into people at the most basic level. So if you're just starting, like, and you are, you know, going ahead and basically just want very simple lighting and want it to look cool and don't want to put a ton, a lot, ton of time into it, this is probably the best option I've found where you literally could just let it go and play these cues on loop and analyze the music and you would have a way better show than if it was in sound active mode. Um, not only that, the ability to patch in other fixtures from, from a venue, from uh, you bought something new, a friend had something, they brought it over, and just be able to add it into your stage, and then it's automatically part of everything, just like that is also really neat. Um, especially at the entry level, there's not a lot of stuff that does that. So, what do I think about Maestro DMX? It initially kind of let me down a little bit. When something's kind of marketed and pitched initially as this AI-based lighting controller, you think, oh, 
I'm just going to plug it in and it's just going to work and it's just going to do the thing and I'm not going to have to do anything about it. Well, you know, we're not there yet and, you know, I don't know if we're going to get there or not, but regardless, this thing can save uh, folks who want a cool show but don't want to put in the time who are at that entry level. Uh, it can save you a lot of time and be a really cool box. So, where do you get it? You can get it from Maestro DMX. We'll link to their website below. Hopefully, we'll be able to sell them uh, sometime in the future, but right now they said they're not really looking for U.S. distribution, and that's fine, um, but you never know. But when you need, when you get this box, you're going to need lights to go with it. At Learn Stage Lighting Gear, we've got them. Feel free to reach out via our contact form. Ask us what we'd recommend. We can put packages together. We've also got our basic band lighting packages, which will work great with the Maestro DMX. And if you want in the future, maybe we'll even have some packages with some pre-programmed Maestro files so that you can just get started. Um, I know the Maestro team was talking about doing that themselves. We could do it. And we'd love to help you with that. So if that sounds good, check it out below. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year if you're watching this in real time. And don't forget the number one place to buy lighting gear, the most helpful people, and uh, just the best place is learning stage lighting gear. We want to help you when you need lights. Come to us. Thanks for watching. See ya.